important things to understand about these problems. And what we basically have for a complex fraction here is we have a fraction in the numerator, a fraction in the denominator. All right? and, and then also we have this larger fraction that's going on. So my, um, my idea of this is that's too many fractions, right? Especially if I'm looking on my phone, I can see that that's way too many fractions for one problem. So if you guys remember for rational equations, what we did to eliminate the fraction was multiply by the LCD. And you could put these numbers here over 1, and you can recognize that the LCD is just x minus 2. So my preferred method, same thing as like solving equations, I'm going to multiply everything times x minus 2. Everything. All right. Now I'm not going to rewrite that, because I, hopefully we can do a little bit of this in our head. If I multiply x minus 2 times 4, I'm just going to be left with 4 times x minus 2. If I multiply x minus 2 times 1 over x minus 2, you guys can see that the x minus 2's will divide to 1. Just leave me with 1. Then in the denominator, x minus 2 times 3 is just 3 times x minus 2. And x minus 2 times a negative 1 over x minus 2 is just going to be a minus 1. Does everybody see that? By multiplying by the LCD, do you guys see how I just simplified this now just to one fraction? Yeah. Right? That's what the power of multiplying by the LCD. Now I'm just going to apply a little distributive property to get rid of my exponents. So I get 4x minus 8 plus 1, and then all over 3x minus 6 minus 1. And then I can simplify this one more time. 4x uh, minus 7 over 3x minus 7. Can I divide out the negative 7s? Yes. No. Guys, you can only divide out terms when they're separated by multiplication. Yes. Order. Okay, these, are, these terms are separated by subtraction. Doesn't work. Like for instance, 1 minus 7, 1 plus, or uh, 2 minus 7. Is that just equal to 1 half? No, that's equal to negative 6 over negative 5. Right? That's not equal to 1 half. Correct? Or negative 1, or yeah, positive 1 half. Right? It's not the same. You can't just divide those out. Um, so, anyways, that's it. Now, let's go a little bit step further because. One thing we talked about in the first day of this chapter was identifying the restrictions, the values that x cannot equal. So let's go back to the original problem, because we're going to want to look at the restrictions from the original problem as well as from our simplified problem. So when we look at the original problem, we realize that x cannot be a certain number, right? Because that would, be, um, that would not be in the domain or, the, or that would be a restriction. So what value can x not equal in this original problem? 2. And then what about here? What value can x not equal? Well, what happens when we set 3x minus 7 equal to 0? We get 7 thirds. OK, so um, in this example, I'm giving you guys the restrictions. The adding restrictions is on your quiz. Um, so you want to make sure you remember 